Hello, my name is Greg Leake, and I'm a product manager at Microsoft on the SQL Server team, and I'm joined by my colleague, Lance Delano, who is a program manager lead also on the SQL Server team. And today we're going to, in this last session of the day, uh, really have a logical tie-in to the session that you just saw, which was Eric and Adam talking about SQL Server data tools and the core SQL tools that have been integrated into Visual Studio. And what we're going to do in this session is transition from those those uh, kind of T-SQL tooling experience for SQL and SQL 14 over to the business intelligence tools. And that's Lance's forte, is all about the BI tools that we have uh, integrated uh, not only into Visual Studio, but now in CTP release, I believe, available for 2014. Uh, for 2014. That's right. Very good. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about uh, SSDT BI, as it is called and uh, to kind of kick things off, a little bit of my background. Um, I actually started, uh, one of the things I did a while back was actually work on SSDT uh, Core, which you heard about in the first hour, and I've transitioned on to work on SSDT BI, and I'm a lead program manager for that, and SSDT BI is, uh, is quite interesting, and I've been in the industry for a while, as you can kind of see there, I've done a lot of developer tools for a long time. So today, um, if you are a BI developer or want to be a, a BI developer, um, this is the session for you. This is an overview for SSDT BI. We're not going to go into great detail on how to actually make these solutions work in great detail, uh, but we will give you the context for them and how you should think about them at sort of the high level, and we'll dip into a demo and show you a little bit about how it works and uh, why it's interesting. You don't, shouldn't need anything uh, in order to kind of get started, uh, so this, just kind of relax and kind of enjoy uh, understanding what's going to go on. All right, so <clears throat> first we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the overall context for Microsoft's BI uh, offerings. We have a personal uh, sort of BI offering and a team BI offering and a corporate BI offering. Uh, and it's in the context of that that you need to be able to understand SSDT BI. So, and then we'll talk a little bit about, we'll actually go into some details about how you get it and uh, what those versions of SSDT BI will actually support. And we'll do a demo and then uh, we'll do some takeaways. Sounds great. Very good. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, Microsoft has um, three sort of BI uh, offerings or stories that we like to enable for our customers. Um, and the first one is what we like to call personal BI, and uh, that's basically BI content, content that is created by the user. It exists in a document typically, and it stays you know, on my machine. It's, it's created by me, and it's for me. Uh, maybe I'm exploring or trying to understand uh, the details behind some numbers, um, but uh, business intelligence can mean a lot of things. But uh, but if I'm trying to explore and understand and document, that's what kind of personal BI is about. I so, might give it to my boss or something, yeah. So when you say document, uh, I think my guess is you primarily mean an Excel workbook that, that a business user might be exploring the data in to, to make discoveries, kind of ad hoc discoveries around the data. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. Or a single report. So exactly. It sits, as we show down here at the bottom, uh, it sits in uh, Excel, and Excel has three add-ins. It has Power Pivot, it has Power View, and there's a new thing that just has kind of come along called Power Query. But the container for all of those things is uh, Excel. So I put it into an Excel document, and I might just use it, or I might give it to my boss. You might send it an email or what have you, but it's still kind of just a solitary document at right. that point. Yeah, it's just okay. intended just for me. Right. Um, the second sort of BI context is what we call Team BI. Um, and that's about, it's the same three things, it's Power Pivot, it's Power View, and it's Power Query, but in a sharing kind of a mode. Now I'm going to put it up on a SharePoint, or I might put it up on Power BI, and I want the whole world to see it, right? And so, um, you know, being able to get previews of what's actually in the document would actually, without actually downloading it, so I can get a web preview without actually editing the document, for instance. Um, that's what Team BI is about. Okay, so when we say the whole world, that's the whole world or whoever you restrict access to. Yeah, my, my team <laughs> your, world. Your team, right. Yeah, your yeah, role yeah. base, your AD integrates with AD security as SharePoint does, et cetera. Exactly. But at least you're in an environment now where it's moved beyond the stage of just a personal workbook and you can actually get it up to your team members, share it with your boss, your CFO, or who, 
or, or whoever you may want to share with. Exactly, exactly. And so things like um, source code control, I mean, they're being able to check things in and out actually start to get enabled in those worlds. Okay. Right. All right. And then the third uh, context is what we like to call corporate BI. And corporate BI is, and this is a little bit of a different situation. In this world, uh, typically there's an IT manager or there's a developer, an, an IT, IT person or a developer that's gone to the, to the trouble of bulletproofing this data. And now it really is for the whole corporation. It really is for the whole world. Um, but it has to be more resilient, right? So, for instance, uh, if I create an ad hoc view on top of this thing, it can't fail. Right. right? So you don't, you don't necessarily want team members kind of tweaking it and making changes at this point. This is kind of the, the truth that you want to publish out to the corporation. Yes, and, and it's also the case that I might have... Um, uh, I might, if I'm just doing personal BI, I'll worry a little bit about this particular view of the data. But when I'm talking about corporate BI, I have to think about all the different angles that people might want to look at it. And so okay. I have to bulletproof it. So I have to be very careful about the data that flows into it, that there are no blanks, and that I've thought about the various error conditions, right? That the data gets refreshed on a regular cadence, for instance. Okay. And then the final one that we find um, a lot of corporations really care a lot about is, is that if it's a corporate solution, let's say it's for sales, I want the east region to be able to see their numbers but not see west or you know, some of these other. Right. So I put security and I put row level security on this data, right? And so I'm, I'm limiting who can actually get at so it. So I think you, get, you gave it away there when you said row level security. Obviously in this model, we're tied back to a corporate SQL Server database. Well, yeah, in this case, mm -hmm. eventually it goes to a SQL Server database, but this, in this case, it gets rolled into SSAS, SQL Server Analysis, analysis Service. Analysis Service, okay. And even there, we have row-based uh, security so that we can kind of limit who can actually get at it. Okay. In fact, the Microsoft uh, sales team actually uses this in this very, very way. So they'll publish a, a Power Pivot workbook, but it's backed by an SSAS server, tabular mo model, and the east region can look, or the region, the Microsoft region can look at their respective areas and not see the other areas. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's what it kind of means to kind of move it to the corporate world. It's bulletproofed. Um, you have to do things like check it into source code control and stuff like that, which is very different from what you have from a personal kind of right. Situation. It's not the mode where you're doing the ad hoc, the, 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 the personal BI mode where you're really kind of doing the exploratory mode. Right? Exactly. Okay. All right. So uh, what are some of the characteristics of uh, that make a difference between corporate BI and some of the others. So one of them we talked briefly about, which is there's some of them on here is security, but let's talk first about scalability. Sometimes these models get into terabyte-sized models, and that's not something I'm typically going to do on my desktop just for me. Um, and I, so I need to partition the data. I need to say I want the, the first 12 months here and the previous 12 months there, and I'll put them on different nodes, and I'll kind of put them out there. Uh, manageability, I have to be able to manage it remotely, uh, and I have to be able to refresh it remotely so that no people are actually involved. And there's a variety of means for doing that. There's SQL Server integration services packages, there's PowerShell, um, and there's a programming model called AMO that you can use to get at it. Um, and security, we talked briefly about that. And then development, uh, it's super important when you're developing a corporate solution that you have things like source code control, you have team kind of development sort of uh, experiences. Modes to restrict and, and put appropriate controls in place. Exactly. So all of this means basically that the corporate solution lives in Visual Studio and SSMS. Um, but that's, and, and, the cor and the Visual Studio solution is what we call SSDT BI. Okay. So that, as a wrapper, is the business intelligence edition of the SQL Server data tools. Exactly. Great. All right, so um, uh, a little bit more about SSDTBI. Uh, it was previously known as BIDS, so sometimes in the literature you'll see, uh, oh, uh, what's happened to BIDS, or where is BIDS, or where can hey, I find correct, BIDS? Correct me if I'm wrong, BIDS was Business Intelligent Development Studio. It was BI okay. Developer Studio. Right. Exactly. But, not, but no longer. But no longer. <laughs> okay. That's right. Um, and as I mentioned, there's three, uh, well, there's three project types that are in there. There's analysis services, there's reporting services, and there's integration services. Those are the three project types that are there. Uh, it's now a web download. It used to ship in the box. What was bids used to actually ship in the box. Now you just get it as a download, um, and you can download the most current version at any point in time. You can just go get it. Um, and, and this is a very super important point. Um, as we enabled our personal and team BI story, 
uh, we started to align with Office. As we ship in Excel, uh, that means our, uh, our, our cadence will match the Office schedules. Right. Right, because we can't have Excel and what you can do in Excel be out of sync with what you can do. So, I, I believe that means the practical implication of you're getting and using these tools is that when there's a major new release of Office or BI functionality with Office, you could expect to have to go download a new release of the BI tools to get that new functionality. Yes. And, and that's important in the context of, of the last module we covered where Eric spent some time talking about the cadence of the SQL Server data tools, the, the, the T-SQL uh, core tooling that really is integrated in the Visual Studio cadence um, instead of the, the, B, the BI Office cadence. So right. it's a slightly different acquisition model, but there's some good news here. Both sets of tools are free. So if you have Visual Studio, they'll integrate with Visual Studio Pro and above. If you don't have Visual Studio, you have a free download that you That's can right. get. And so in either case, uh, there are free tools for all developers, whether you're BI or Core or both, uh, to get and use. Yeah. Great. Exactly. And so uh, when, when you hear of SQL Server, for instance, doing a major release, it's not always that we'll have big BI updates in that release. We'll have the BI the big major functionality updates will come along with um, Office. Okay, that's, that's a good, good. Clarific care, clarification. Well, point. all of what you said is true. It's just that the big features, people expect big features when there's a release of, say, SQL Server. Right. But they should really be looking for the big Office releases. because For, that's, for the BI, for, for the, the new BI, BI features. Because that's yes. what we'll line up with. Whereas with SQL Server, you would expect to see the major features like the in-memory OLTP, the mission critical enhancements, the hybrid cloud enhancements that we've covered in earlier modules today. Yeah, great. Very good. All right. And then the final point is, is that almost everybody that uh, works in the BI sort of developer space with Microsoft tools use third-party tools. And there's a number of them that are out there. There's Bids Helper, there's DAX Studio, but everybody uses these open source tools that are designed to work with our project types and templates. Okay. So if you are getting into this space, you should understand that everybody uses them. So, and we try to work with that, that community. Great. All right, um, currently today we have, uh, and what I'm going to be using to demo today is the Visual Studio 2012 based version of SSDT. And you can see there that it supports uh, SSAS uh, um, versions that are 2012 or lower, and SSRS projects of SQL 2012 or lower, and then SSIS only targets SQL 2012. And um, that has to do with um, the way they've kind of been built architecturally in the past. Um, that's going to be changing in 2013 and forward, although you'll see here in 2013 we'll support um, uh, SQL Server 2014 and lower for SSAS and SSRS. SSIS will only target SQL uh, 2014, but going forward it will be able to target lower projects. And they made some changes in this last release. Uh, previously, they'd been targeting the binary version, and now they're going to be supporting a compatibility level in their engine like we do in SSAS and SSRS. Okay, and that makes sense. And so I think also, if you notice on that slide, it was in, in sm smaller print. You could today go up and get the pre-release of SSDT BI for SQL 2014. There that's is correct. A, there is a free download available that's essentially a, a CTP, a community technology preview, that supports uh, SQL 2014. And it is 2012 based, however, it will go away when we actually release uh, Visual S Studio 2012 based. It is yeah, Visual, Visual Studio, Studio 2012, 2012 based. But it'll become Visual Studio 2013 based with the release of SQL 2014. That's right. And We've got our years all going on here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, so, uh, but the version that is, 20, is Visual Studio 2012 based will be retired when we actually release right. Server 2012. And then, then for the standalone mode, you would get the, the Visual Studio 2013 integrated shell as a standalone shell for the tool. That's right. You could either, depending on whether you wanted, if your Visual Studio environment, if the, if the, if the standard in your work environment was 2012, mm -hmm. you could get Visual 2012. You wouldn't be able to go target SQL Server 2014. Right. You need the VS 2013 shell right, for that. Right. Okay. And then 2013 will target everything below. Great. With the caveat with respect to SSIS. Great. So I think we got all the bases covered there, all, <laughs> all the versions of Visual Studio and all the versions of SQL Server well covered. Very good. Okay, with that, let's kind of go to a demo and kind of show a few things here. Cool, let's take a look. Uh, and we're going to start with um, Excel. And this is just simply to illustrate the functionality that we find um, uh, in 
what we see in the personal side of the story, and then we'll contrast that with what you get on the corporate side. Okay. So here I have um, um, Excel, and I see I have Power Pivot here. It's been enabled, and I say I want to manage, meaning I want to work with a Power Pivot model. Now, um, the important thing to understand here, as we ship Excel, inside of Excel, we actually ship the same um, analysis services engine um, as part of Excel, except it's kind of stripped down a little bit. And it's the same version that we ship for the version that we ship uh, that has a, you know partitioning and everything else. It's the same core engine, so that's why you can kind of transfer these models. Okay. So if I go ahead and say, bring, I want to bring in some data from, uh, say, SQL Server, I want to import it. And let's okay, say, so you're going against a live SQL Server database. Yep, and this one's one that's been prettied up a little bit, so it has nice uh, SSAS kinds of things like dimensions and tables. Okay. Uh, but it is just simply a relational database. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to pull in fact, internet sales, one table. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select all of the related tables. And what that does is it looks at that fact internet sales and it looks out at all of the tables that are related to it and it selects Via them. the foreign key relationships as defined in SQL Server? Exactly. Okay. And I'll bring that in very quickly. That'll just take a couple of seconds. Okay. Now we'll close that and we'll take a look around here at what you actually have. So you see the inside, uh, let me just, for those who've never seen it, Here's Excel over here, and here's Power Pivot, which is the window that was launched uh, from within Excel. And in here, I can do things like, well, first of all, let me just kind of uh, very quickly. I'll give you the tabular view here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give view. you the diagram view of this. So this is what I said earlier, fact internet sales, and it mm -hmm. went out and looked at all the foreign key relationships that are related to it. So if I come over here, and I say select fact internet sales, I can do things like, uh, and I'm just going to very quickly do this. Create a, so we'll say, um, let's see, I want uh, product, total product cost plus, say, um, freight. And I'll just. So some aggregation functions, you're putting functions in. Yeah, this is creating what's called a calculated column. Mm -hmm. And this basically adds. Uh, a storage row, it extends the table, and this gets actually stored in the, in the data. Okay. Okay. And um, now I'm going to come over here very quickly, and I want to find um, total product sales amount. Here it is. And I come in here, write a quick little formula, and I'll say um, sum, sum of sales colon equals, and I'm going to say, whoops, I want to say sum, and I want, uh, this is um, fact internet sales, and I want to pull in um, sales amount. Great. All right. So what this has done is create something that we previously have called a measure. So I have two things in here. I have a measure and I have a calculated column. So now I'm going to close this and come back to, whoops, I want to do one other thing really quick. Um, I want to insert a pivot table into Excel. And what this has done, you can see here are the, uh, here are the tables that exist in my model. This is coming straight from Power Pivot, and it's stored with the Excel file. Okay. And so now what I can do is I can come over here and I can say, okay, I want to say, remember fact internet sales, and you'll recall that we created a thing called sum of sale mm -hmm. right there. And let's say that I bring in, uh, say, dim product, and let's go look at, say, all of the colors. And these are the colors of the various products. Pretty simple little pivot table. Right. right. Some simple, we're not really business analysts over here. We're more <laughs> developer types, but I get, I get the gist. You right. You want to look at sales by color, apparently. Exactly. So okay. you can imagine I can build out a very complex, complex. pivot table. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keep that in mind. So this is, this is what I've done. But remember, uh, sitting in Excel is the data. It's sitting right here. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to close this guy because we don't need it anymore. And now we're going to go to Visual Studio. And we're right here. 
Oops, I need to start over here. No Say, problem. I want to close this solution. No. So okay. Now we're in 2012 here. We're in 2012. But, but shortly at the release of 20, SQL 2014, you'll be able to use these same tools within Visual Studio 2013. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now I, I say file new project, and you'll see here I have business intelligence, and I have analysis services, mm -hmm. integration services, and reporting services. The three core project types are there. Yep. Now, you may recall from the last session you would have seen SQL Server. Data, database projects. Database projects, yep. and that's sort of the, the cousin, as it were, of right. these project types. So what I could do, uh, I could import directly from PowerPivot. That model that I just created, I could just bring it directly in to this project, into okay. Visual Studio, and begin using it. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to do that, that right that's now. That's very similar to what Eric and Adam did when they sucked in a schema from a live database. Is that yeah. not correct? I mean, yeah. the, the analogy is there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Great. in this case, remember, we have the personal team and corporate BI stories. Right. This Power Pivot model might have been created by IW. Okay. Right, and it may have been something that they had on their desktop and they were working with it and they thought it was really great and now it's ready to grow up. So you want to probably use the workbook that they were playing around with to exactly. bring it Exactly, as the okay. starting point, Thanks. exactly. Got it. Or I might work with uh, Excel to kind of prototype with the user and I get it to a point they can see it, we're testing it out with some pivot tables and I say now I finally got it to a good place and now I import it from Power Pivot directly into SSDT. Okay, that makes That's sense. That's another way to go. Yep. But the point is, is that we have this, we have this uh, a way of moving back and forth between these various stories. Great. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to instead just create an empty uh, tabular project. And you see we have the other project types here as well. Um, and before I do actually do do the creation, here's the integration project services and here's reporting. Mm -hmm. We'll come back and do a reporting services project very briefly. So we'll go ahead and create this. And localhost. It's all beautiful. Now, over here, um, I have an empty business, uh, I have an empty model, okay? But you see it shows up here as a tabular project, and this represents my model file, basically. Okay. But up here, you see I have import from data source, mm -hmm. and I have a number of other things which we'll look at in a minute, but let's go ahead and get some data in here, and let's bring it in from SQL Server. And again, we'll go here, and we'll bring it in from the same data source, which is the data warehouse source. Okay. And here I have to do a little bit more information. It doesn't believe it's me. Well, we better make sure that it knows that it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm going to select. And again, I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. In Fact, Excel, yeah. In Excel, Fact Internet Sales. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to select the related tables and finish and bring them in again. And I wanted to show this to show that the same functionality exists. It's, it's almost, it's the same set of tools. So if, yeah. you, if, if you're a, a person that lives in Visual Studio, more of the developer type, you'd be completely comfortable working in the Excel workbook mode. Yeah. Probably most business analysts aren't going to be working in the Visual Studio mode, but it's really handy that, the, that they had the same interface, the same icons, the same, the same tooling that is consistent across both environments. Yep, exactly. Right. Yep. And you'll see here, I have exactly the same uh, data that I saw when I was in the pivot, uh, Power Pivot. So if I come over here to Fact Internet Sales, I can do the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I can come all the way over here, add this column here, and again, I can say uh, equals, and I want to bring in total product cost. And I did, I think, what was it, freight, right? Yeah, the calculated column. Right. And yeah. Save that, and mm -hmm. it's stored here. I was over in some sales, sales amount right here. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll say equals, and I'm going to say sum of, and I'm going to bring in, name of the table is fact internet sales. And I'm going to bring in, um, was it sales amount? There it is right there. Okay. Same. And there's your, now you didn't, it used to be called a measure. What did we, what are we, what are we calling that? In Excel, now? we call them, um, in Excel, we call them calculated fields. Okay. But I'm going to change this here so that it's uh, consistent with what I was doing. Whoops. I don't want to do that. Let's start over again. I want to go backspace. I wanted to call this uh, sum of sales. Okay. Or maybe total sales or something like that. 
boom. That's in there. All right. Now, what I don't have here is I don't have a pivot table to go look at, but we'll show you how you solve that problem in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, what I wanted to show you first, however, was some of the other things that now light up. Um, so, for instance, I can go ahead and remember I was talking about the scenario where I want to limit what different types of people in, in the organization can see. see this particular exactly. View. Okay. So here, what I can do is I can say I want to create a new perspective, mm -hmm. and I can say, okay, for this set of you know set of users in my organization, I want them to see the promotion and the product and the date, and um, that's it. And I'm going to call this thing. Uh, you know, I'll just leave it as new perspective. But it might now. be like public view one or something of yeah. that nature, or team one. Yep. Exactly. But then you see here it shows up here, and I could limit mm -hmm. what I'm actually looking at. Um, similarly, um, I can define roles. Mm -hmm. So I can define a new role, and I can go in and hit put uh, filters on what people can actually see. Okay. And I can write a filter that would limit it to um, just the east region. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole blog post on how to do this so you kind of get their ID and you have a little table and you do the lookup. And okay. So you can do the filter so that uh, it limits it down to the exact set of rows that you're able to see. Great. And um, no, I don't want to save them. Whoops. Cancel. Yes, close it anyway. And the final thing to kind of look at really briefly here is partitions. We talked about that as well, which is that um, you know, if I want to store one year's worth of data on one cluster and another year's worth of data on another cluster, et cetera, et cetera. So Part this becomes really important when we're talking about very large data warehouses. Exactly. So if you're using something like the Microsoft Parallel Data Warehouse and you might have terabytes, if not petabytes of information, you would be working with partitions probably. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All of this is to illustrate the fact that um, what you do in SSDT is built so that it can scale up. Okay. And it can go out to multiple other users. So whether you're working with a single kind of SQL Express kind of mode or all the way up to full-on corporate data warehouse, the tooling is the same. Exactly. And now uh, what I have here is I have a project. I can check this into source code control, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I can do all the sort of team-based things that I normally do, right? Um, I mentioned briefly that uh, if I'm here in, um, in SSDT, I want to be able to do things like um, look at this the way I did in, in Excel. And here I have, what I've done is I've launched Excel, and now... Uh, Your diagram view is what you want to get to. Well, I can't get there from here. My diagram view, my diagram view is back mm -hmm. here in SSDT. Okay. All I have here now is the kind of view that I would have as a user that's connecting to the model. Oh, so it's like a preview mode for it's what like the user is going to see. For what the user is going to okay. see. Now, I could pre-build this. Now, remember I did total sales. Mm -hmm. so there are these total sales. Right. And I did, I think, uh, product color or something like that. Yeah, sales by color, I think. Yeah. So just along so those this lines. all works. Uh, color. Yep. Okay, there it is. Yep. This is the same pivot table, but now if I come in here and I go to power pivot mm -hmm. and I say manage, this is going to be empty because the real model is sitting back in that tabular model that I'm building. Okay. This this version of, of Excel doesn't have the model. This is just w connecting to the to model. To your existing model. Okay. Right. So I can use uh, Power Pivot with my model locally, or mm -hmm. I can use Power Pivot to connect to a model that the developer creates and pushes out to a different place. And so this is actually just showing the fact that I, I can now get a lot of that same pivoting functionality, but it's sitting on that server right. far away. So you're, you're, you've Connect, you've connected Excel directly to your analysis server. Exactly. Yes. It's, now not, it's now moved from the realm of personal BI to, to the realm of corporate BI. That's right. Now, if I go and launch, uh, here we go, SQL Server Management Studio. Mm -hmm. um, local. We will see uh, these are the... These are the things we're, we're working with. Okay. Okay. So and there's your model. Okay. Now, I haven't deployed yet, which I'm going to do in a second. Mm -hmm. These are previous ones I've created. But okay. You'll see that that's actually where it's connected to. Right. So I've shown that uh, you can get a preview. I've shown the fact that you have these additional tools. Now what we want to do uh, is we want to deploy. And it's called 34, Project 34. Okay, Project 34. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and we'll go ahead and just do this. And uh, 
There we go. Okay. We'll close that. Now we'll go back to SSMS. And see if it's and deployed. And this right there. There it is. Oh, then there it is. Project 34. Great. So now we've deployed it up to our, our SQL Server instance. Exactly. So now it's live. So what I have shown you so far is I've shown you the fact that I can uh, create an analysis services project and put it into my solution. Mm -hmm. That's one of the three project types that I can create. Great. But now that I've created it, I can go ahead and add uh, another project type. So let's add um, a new project. Let's add a reporting project. Okay. And what we'll do here, we'll do the little wizard here, and we'll just call it Report Project 1. And um, we'll just kind of go through here very quickly. New data source. And what I want to do here is... Find, find, a, find a good database to drive off Yeah, of. the good database uh, we want. Um, no, we don't want this guy. We want... Uh, server name is local. Uh, where'd it go? I, oh, this is the... Are we on the right... There we go. Source there. Mike. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now we'll try this. And I want 34, which is the one. The one with the GUID after it basically is my workspace database. Okay. And that's just for local usage. Debug and development. Exactly. Okay. So I test this connection. It yep. looks like it's working great. So then I'll say, okay, I want to go ahead and use that. Uh-oh. It's failed. Let's see. What have we got? Didn't like your credentials. The login failed. Uh, oh yes, oh, it doesn't understand. like your it doesn't like your integrated Windows credentials. It looks like. Mm. Could you go in as SA or something? Uh, not to here. Okay. But let me let me just uh, let's do this instead, um, just to kind of illustrate it. So to save this demo. Okay. Um, let's do this again. And let's pull in this guy just to illustrate that I can bring in from um, an existing data source. Exactly. Okay. No, that would not work. Assuming you have permissions, which I guess we didn't. We didn't in the last one. <laughs> exactly. Um, um, so query builder. All right. So now you're going to build an actual simple report. Yeah, except it's not bringing anything up. Well. We probably have a little bit of a credential problem going on. Yeah, it is. But here, here I have both my uh, reporting project and my tabular project in the same solution. Both in the same solution. I okay. can check them in, check them out, and right. I can deploy them at the same time. Okay. And, and these come both both of those project con types get installed within Visual Studio when you do the download off of the SSDT BI website. That's correct. Okay, so you have that, and then we didn't mention, but also the SQL Server Integration Services project right. type is the third project type. Yep. Okay, great. Very good. So that's what I have for a demo. Um, we'll go back to slides and, or is, you have? Yeah, we yep. have just some Let's basic key takeaways okay. here. So um, the important thing to understand here is, is that uh, SSDT uh, BI includes analysis services, reporting services, and integration services, those three. They're all available from the web. Um, the major functionality uh, aligns with uh, releases from Office. Uh, that's where you should look for big updates. And it works seamlessly with the self-service products such as PowerPivot, PowerView, and Power Query. Great, and you know we should mention if you're you know ever looking for these tools in, in the latest editions or the blog site, just do a web search, a Bing search uh, on SQL Server Data Tools Business Intelligence, and you'll get directed right to the appropriate site on MSDN where you can download the latest commercial release or potentially the latest CTP release like we have going on right now that supports SQL twenty or SQL two thousand fourteen. Yep. So all those tools are, are available just for free, just like the, in the previous module we saw what Eric and Adam had to show, Integrated into Visual Studio, also free for all developers. Um, and so we've seen a recap of what we are showing in this module, the business intelligence tools. Thank you very much, Lance, for the, for the compelling demos and the explanations of the project types supported. Um, in the last module, we saw... Uh, really the tooling for, for developers to do schema-based development, declarative development 
um, as well as connected development on top of SQL 2014. And then during the day, we just really want to thank you for being here today for the previous modules you also saw about the hybrid cloud and what we have to offer with SQL 2014 integration not only with the development tools we've seen here, but especially integrated with the Azure Cloud. So tools like being able to very easily deploy an on-premise database up into an Azure virtual machine or into an Azure SQL database, the backup from SQL, uh, from on-premise database up into Azure storage. Um, so really the integrated view of hybrid cloud, being able to bridge the worlds of on-premise data, on-premise databases, with the world of, of really using the cloud to extend your own data, uh, data center very quickly, easily, and efficiently, and, and most, most importantly, cost effectively without having to buy hardware, et cetera. So um, there are going to be some evals uh, coming up here shortly. We really, really value your feedback and would like you to take the time to fill out those evals. And again, we just want to thank you for joining us for uh, today's session. Good day.